Hello, and welcome to Wizardry. I'm no different from any other hobbyist. I have a pile of shame, and I often have more than one project that I'm working on at a time, and had several in the works before I started Wizardry. They've been staring at me from the shelves and dark corners, so I decided to invite you along as I finish off these neglected projects. When I'd started this piece, I'd only the base. We'd moved into a new house, and in the garage there was a carton of concrete patch that had set up rock hard. After some cleanup and a primer coat and dry brushing, my Reaper Bones wear rat had a home. I purchased some Reaper Plague Rats to keep in company, and the image of a dark, dank sewer scenario came to mind, and this diorama was born. With my texture roller from Nightmare Landscapes and some foam core, I began to work on the diorama's backdrop, a large sewer grate with a darkened maze of tunnels beyond. I worked the roller pretty aggressively to make sure that the joints between the stones were very deep. The roller worked awesomely, but I was using it as more of a guide than a finished product. I didn't want a clean, precise look to the masonry. We're talking about an old sewer that was constructed for function and not for aesthetics, and I assumed that it had been patched haphazardly over the years. When cutting the opening, I didn't need to be clean and precise. Since I was aiming for a rough and aged look, I doubled the width of the cardstock to add depth to the masonry. The wear rat was to appear to be merging from the large drain tunnel where he or something else had torn through the metal grating. After cutting thin strips of cardboard to make my iron grate, I textured the opening and knocked off the burrs before sandwiching the iron grate between the cardstock with a liberal amount of PVA glue. I had considered using wire for this, but in the end, sticking to this original plan, I did end up being very satisfied with the outcome. With my backdrop pieces primed with Mod Podge PVA paint mix, it was time to start the construction. Foam from some takeout containers ended up being my go-to material for the tunnel wall in the darkness beyond the grate. After hitting it with a texture roller and some spray adhesive, I taped it into place to let it set while I worked on another smaller sewer tunnel entrance. I freehanded the stonework for this entrance with my X-Acto knife. I wanted the appearance of either roughly cut or possibly a different stone than what was used on the rest of the wall. Though in the end, you barely even see it, I also added width to it by gluing scraps to the back and cut out the backdrop for more depth. It was now time to rip open the grate. As well as add some damage and interest to the wall. As I mentioned, I wanted an old, patched, haphazard, chaotic look to this masonry and super gluing thin pieces of foam to it did the trick. The super glue eats at the foam to give that organic feel that I was going for, like some of the stone had just been chipped or rotted away. My next step was to trim off the backdrop for fitting and to start putting my Nightmare Landscapes texture paint to work. Aged, broken, chipped masonry, and the considerable grime and ick in a sewer, I thought I needed to convey that by adding as much and many textures as I could. And, luckily for me, Nightmare Landscapes are continually coming up with new ideas in this realm, and I can experiment to my heart's content. With the texture paint dried, I added Wizardry's Sewer Wash. I mixed up a homemade wash that does not look appealing at all, and that's what I had intended. This is a sketch of the base. At this point, I'm still constructing in my head and experimenting off camera on exactly how all this is going to look in the end. Again, hats off to Nightmare Landscapes and their texture paints for taking some of the guesswork out of creating the effects that I wanted. Building up the textures and depth of the stonework and keeping it looking organic was easy with these paints. 
Simply altering the application can give you a completely different look. Some of the masonry looks relatively smooth, and by stippling, I can increase the texture to make the next stone look totally opposite. I used Nightmare Clumpy Snow Texture Paint to create my weeping and eroding mortar joints, as well as spots where just mortar was used to patch the random holes. With this being back in the shadows, I needed to darken it down considerably, so I stippled on some black craft paint. The main wall needed dirty down as well, but not blackened, so I used more wizardry sewer wash. I had a few tweaks yet as far as shadows and color variations, but all in all, everything was coming together as planned, and I was anxious to see all the pieces all put together and as one unit. It had lived in my head for so long, and it's always exciting to see a project come to fruition. One of my last tweaks was deeper joints and more damage. Any exposed foam would be covered in the next steps. And finally, it was time to put the back tunnel and the wall face together. All the fit testing, retesting, tweaking, and trimming was completed, and this major piece was ready for the final steps before being mounted to the base. Nightmare Moss and Craft Paint gave me a beautifully gross sewer moss color. The tunnel needed some slime features, but they had to remain dark to blend into the shadows. As you can see, I once again reached for used dryer sheets to create an effect. I have found them to be a versatile and effective tool when doing a number of things from snow to moss or fabrics. Details done and it's basing time. I used a healthy amount of hot glue and was ready to give this wear rat a home. And what sewer home would be complete without moss lichen and ooze nightmare moss craft paint and of course dryer sheets and we are well on our way to some disgusting home decor Of course, not all the decor in our little fiend's home would be organic. A lot of things find their way into the sewers, and with my Nightmare Landscapes paints in hand and some 3D prints from Thingverse, Nightmare Landscapes has set me up with plenty of random items that have ended up here in the darkened catacombs under the city. When painting these items, I didn't worry about complete or even coverage. I basically just scratched on colors as I layered up and let the haphazard approach convey the appearance that they had been down here for some time. Using this method of painting was very liberating after pouring over every little detail in the previous parts of the creation of this diorama. Even though they would feature heavily in the end product, they were just more or less background or accent pieces that contributed to the overall feel of the piece. After attaching the flotsam and jetsam to the diorama, I began to work on the water that would be surrounding the small island the where rat and his companions would be perched on. I began with Nightmare Landscape's rough ground texture paint. Nightmare Black Wash and Cursed Forest Wash mixed into a two-part epoxy. 
I told myself I wouldn't experiment on the diorama itself. All experiments would be off camera in case of a disaster. I did not listen. I topped my first layer with pledge floor care, epoxy, and nightmare landscapes cursed forest wash, and ended up with a green, ugly, opaque rubber. So I cut holes in it and inserted debris underneath it to give it some movement and volume. Then added scraps from the Reaper Troll King I'd slaughtered in a previous build. With my dark bottom covered in a beautiful greenish water idea utterly destroyed, I worked up another plan of attack. The first step in my new plan was to paint the troll parts in a slimy, decaying color scheme using several paints and texture paint. While simultaneously blending other colors onto the rubber vomit that now was encompassing my diorama. After the paint had dried, it was onto phase two, sealing it all in with two part epoxy. When the epoxy had cured, a clear caulking was my phase three. I knew I'd get bubbles, but I wanted that. I worked the caulking to represent a disturbance in the water. Maybe a creature, or maybe a current. Between that and the bubbles, my thought was to convey an idea of movement. I then reached for my Nightmare Landscape's moss, rough ground effects, and black paint to add some more interest to the diorama. I was pretty well satisfied with how the water effect had turned out, but going from the moss-covered features to crystal clear water with a jumble of debris in the underneath was not the look that worked. So once again, I broke out the dryer sheets and began a final application of my moss details, starting with the background. This added more depth and textures, and also, by not completely mixing my ingredients, I had more variations of color. After completing the background, I focused on blending in the objects on the land and blending the land to the water, before then working my way around the perimeter, leaving bits of waterway exposed. I made sure that I varied the thickness and texture as well as the color range of the ground cover as I progressed. The more details and variation that I could include would lend to a more complete and dramatic look to the scene when it was finished. And one of my favorite details is this little monstrosity surfing on the river of ooze. When the newest additions were dry, I mixed a palette of moss effects with some Nightmare Landscapes paints and added highlights and shadows where I thought things were looking too monochromatic. I then dabbed at select areas with high gloss Mod Podge to enhance the damp and dank appearance. I also utilized my Nightmare Landscapes UV resin for this and the Wear Rat Saliva. And with that, my diorama dweller was finished. It's been a long time coming and I thank you for hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoy it. It was a fun build for me. I had some what the <laughs> moments, but all in all, I'm happy with the outcome. And I learned some things to do and not to do, as I hope you have too. Thank you so much to Nightmare Landscapes. And thank you. All of you who are watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. I've picked up several new subscribers while doing this build, and I'm totally pumped about that. Your support, feedback, and participation means a lot to me. I love making these videos, and I hope to do so for a long time. Without an audience, I'm just a guy holed up in my basement, talking to myself. Please let me know if there's something you'd like to see, and pass the word if you enjoy this channel. Like, share, subscribe. As always, thank you, I'm Wes, and this is Wizardry.